kids, I was born into a home of a uh, photographer, my grandfather, and my grandmother, who raised me, showed me the transcendent power of nature. I went into my landscape exploring themes related to intangible presence that can exist in the natural world despite a physical absence. I decided intuitively to use depth of field within the areas of connection, these geometric forms, so that it could be an opportunity for the viewer, for me, to imagine what could be there. That research holds inherently in it hopefulness. My theory is called Savale. And Savale is a very common expression that we use in Côte d'Ivoire to say it will be okay. I started the project in 2016 after the terrorist attack that happened in the beach of Grand Bassam. I wanted to talk about it around me with my family, my friends, but uh, most of the time they would shorten the conversation saying Savale. I did many visits there and I photographed the city always with my iPhone. That's how I realized that I couldn't recognize this city. After a terrorist attack, all you have is hope. So I printed the pictures on canvas and I started embroidering. It was adding a layer of hope on a landscape that was sad and um, empty. The series shown in this pre-picture ex exhibition is titled Human Nature. It's a series of interconnected stories about how people rely on nature in the context of climate change. I think stories about nature tend to be easily divided between disaster or paradise. More and more people are thinking about the world is broken, and I think we need stories that picture the world that we want to see. And then the goal is to have those stories in combination speak to a larger idea about how we need nature. Hope in my photographs is in the content of the individual image, is in the story that image points to, but also in the usage of the photograph in the world. I felt I needed to remove myself from the daily environment in where we are so distracted. I would go to different parts in the world, remote areas, to be there for three weeks to let everything become quiet, mostly also myself, to then arrive to a sort of uh, point zero in where I think the body is recognizing where we uh, come from. Being in this environment also brings me so last. At this moment, sensing this, I would photograph because it's for me not anymore about seeing, but really about feeling and experiencing. For me, hope is also a sense of trust and to know that things will go forward in a better way. And the trust is what I do find returning to this area of nature. The shortlisted series for the Pre-Pictet is titled Limbs. When I was photographing in the ICRC hospital in Kabul, one of the staff members mentioned that in the hospital in Jalalabad they had amassed this collection of prosthetic limbs that had been left behind by villagers as they came to be fitted for their real leg. And it's a series of handmade, improvised prosthetic limbs. Think about what the common images are of civilian casualties that we see from war zones. People that automatically elicit feelings of pity or elicit feelings of, I don't want to look at that. And by abstracting a similar scenario into the objects itself, they become a very powerful communicative tool for audiences to maybe think about that person's life. Realistically, hope is about the best case scenario. And somehow I think that the series fits with that idea. My mother's family come from Greece 
and they arrived as economic immigrants to South Africa in the 1930s. And when they arrived, they had this portrait taken in like a professional photo studio with like a nice backdrop. And that photograph is just such a treasured, beautiful memory of this dignified moment that they had. And I thought it would be incredible to offer that kind of opportunity to people in some of the places that I visit. And we have a little portable photo printer and we print out the pictures and we give it to people. And in, especially in the refugee camps, people have lost their whole family archive, not just photographs, but everything. And so this is really like the rebuilding of the family archive, our family and our identity. And I think that is the essence of hope. And it does, it feels like a kind of public archive of love. The work that's shortlisted for the pre pick Day this year is my work from Iraq and Syria documenting the fight to defeat ISIS over the last three years. So the notion of hope was hard to find, but in the end we managed to find these examples of people surviving. And so what drives me is to uncover stories that are going on, particularly in the context of war, and show the world what is happening mainly to civilians. I met her in the morning before we went out where I spoke with her and her family and said, look, I'm a photographer working for an American newspaper. I want to come with you, show the world what you're going through. And she said, of course, without hesitation. So I produced this piece on the street corner in Johannesburg where we've painted the wall to create this effect of, this, of a spiral shifting endless, endlessly upwards towards the sky. It's inspired by a sculpture that exists in Germany by the Swiss architect and designer Max Boll. I compose this imaginary landscape by using elements of drawing and painting and physical performance. So the title is called Principle of Hope. My title comes from this piece of Marxist literature about adopting utopian ideologies to overcome economic burdens and so forth. The crack is very symbolic. That means that something is about to collapse. But the hope element in my work comes from empowering young people to become part of the artistic process. And art for me now is a tool for, to help young people overcome certain things. This project takes place in Transylvania, in the remote region of Maramuresh. It's documenting a daily life of small rural communities. And this way of life revolves around the culture of haymaking. People live in a symbiotic relationship with nature because the life of this community depends on the hay meadows and the life of the hay meadows depends on the people. But this way of life is under threat because of globalization, because the youth is not interested to work uh, with the land anymore, yet they still are uh, you know, engaged in this culture using the same forks, the same wooden rakes uh, from 500 years ago. That gives me hope that perhaps you know, the culture will pass on to the next generation in some way. The essence of a desert is nothingness, but I wanted to show that there's extraordinary life and resilience and hope in the desert, and that it is actually inhabited by extraordinary people. And Namibia is now into its seventh year without a drop of rain. This has caused mass migration of people, so I decided to go inland and find the reason why they were abandoning their land. This photograph is particularly poignant to me, personally. I had just been diagnosed with cancer, and when I found this tree that was bearing leaves, and it actually has three flowers on it, and I realized if this tree can survive, so can I.